This is the second part of the organized counting lesson. Uh, the first part we talked about factorials and permutations and kind of any countdown you're losing options as you went and the difference between the two of them. Uh, this time your options are going to kind of stay the same. It'll be a little bit more multiplying that's going to be happening. Uh, let's say I'm flipping a coin. I want to flip a coin three different times. How many outcomes are totally possible? Now you flip a coin, you have two outcomes. You either got heads or you got tails. You have two outcomes in total when you flip the coin one time. If I'm going to flip it three times though, I'm going to have two for the first time, then I'm going to have two for the second one, and I'll have two for the third one, which is going to give me a total of eight total outcomes. Now, a couple of other ways I can answer that question would be two to the exponent three, okay? Because I had two, but I had three times. I was doing that, two times, two times two. I could have also done a tree diagram. Heads, tails, heads, tails. Heads, tails. And then again for the third one. Heads, tails, heads, tails. And there'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total branches on that tree. Okay? Bottom line, eight total outcomes. Getting dressed for school. How many different co uh, clothing combinations can you have? If you have five pants, four shirts, and two shoes that you're going to wear. Okay? So I'm going to have to wear pants and shirts and shoes. So I have five pants to choose from, and then I need to wear uh, shirts, so it'll be times my four shirts, and then multiplied by my two shoes. Okay, five times four is 20, times two is 40. There's 40 different outfits. Now, why did you multiply? You multiply because you were and. You have the pants and shirts and shoes. You need to multiply them together. Okay, uh, let's say you're going to order some food at a restaurant. Okay, you go to a restaurant, it has seven appetizers, five main courses available, and three desserts. You will need to order one from each. Okay, so you go to order apps, there's seven choices for you. And I need to order five main courses, uh, one from the five main courses, but there's five options for me. And then I have three options for desserts. I multiply all those together, okay, and you end up getting how many total available options there are, which I believe is 105 total available options. Okay, Now what gets a little interesting is maybe you don't have to order one from each, but you need to order something. Well that means that now you have actually take your things and you would have a zero possibility. I don't order an app, I don't order a main course, I don't order a dessert. So instead of having seven apps, there's actually eight options because you have the zero option. And your five main courses actually turns into six. And your three dessert options, you might, you know, three different food options, but then you have the option of not getting one, so it turns into four options. So you would have now eight times six times four. Now you multiply that, you know, they increased by one because you had the option of not ordering one of those things. Okay, so you multiply all those together, okay? But then you're gonna get have to subtract one away. And that one option is if you ordered nothing, which you said we can't do that. You go in a restaurant, you're gonna to have to order something. So the zero, zero, zero is not really an option. So you multiply eight times six, 48, 48 times four is 160, 192. Subtract one is gonna be 191 total options. Okay, so when you have, you need to order something, but you don't have to have order one of each, you can actually put in the zero option for each, which increases the options by one, and then you have to subtract away the zero, zero, zero option at the end, because you do have to order something. Uh, multiple choice test. You have four options for each question, 10 questions in total. So the first question, how many total answer, different answer copies could there be? You have you know, four options for each question, so it could be an A, a B, a C, a D, choose one. And you have all four, it's going to repeat itself each time. It's going to be four for the first one, four for the second one. So you have four for the first one, you have four for the second one. And you're going to have ten different times that's going to happen. So the total scenarios is four to the exponent of ten, which is going to be a very large number. Now sometimes you have or questions where it can be this or it can be that and you have to add them up. For example, how many different ways can I roll a number seven when I'm rolling two dice? 
Okay, the number of ways I can rule a number seven, well, it can be a one and a six, or it can be a six and a one. It can be a two and a five, or it can be a five and a two. It can be a four and a three, or it can be a three and a four of your dice outcomes. You roll a one on one dice and you roll a six on the other. Either way, these totals give you seven, which means there's six total ways. Okay. Uh, how many ways can I roll a 12? Well, the only way you can roll a 12 is if you roll a six on the first one and a six on the second one. Okay, there's only one way. And how many ways can I roll anything but a 12? Well, this gets into uh, the total, total scenarios. We know there's one way to roll a 12, but how many ways are there to roll anything but a 12? Now, if you do a two-dimensional grid, where you have the outcomes of the first dice on the, on the horizontal, on the vertical of the outside uh, outcomes of the second dice, and then you have dots representing each different scenario of the two dice being rolled. This is a great visual way to see all possible scenarios. Okay? So if I, let's say for example, uh, this outcome right here, that outcome is rolling a three on the one die and a two on the other. Okay? Now, how many total possible scenarios are there? There's 36 in total. There's one way of rolling a 12. And that's rolling a six and a six. Okay? So that means there's 35 ways of not rolling a 12. And now this is a lesson, large lesson on uh, organized counting. There are many different scenarios uh, to cover and we're going to do a lot of different examples um, to try and explain all these. Thank you very much.